let's take a look at this upper garden. I call it that because there is, in fact, a lower garden. <laughs> this garden is new to me as of the end of summer last year. I did immediately take out a row of very large Leyland Cypress that ran along the top of this wall and very close to the house. And that improved things immensely. Not one of my favorite trees, I'm afraid, and they already had disease. And then I began to put in some perennials. We have teeny tiny peonies. And we have one of my favorite plants, Salvia Garnetica. Phlox. Uh, A lot of these were bare root when I got them. The um, salvias were not. They came from select seeds. I buy salvia from them every year and they're always wonderful. The salvia farinacea, very clean. I grew from seed. I have some orange tiger lilies. Um, a poppy that I don't remember what it is. <laughs> More teeny tiny um, peonies. So a lot of these I got bare root and they were just generic. This was a, a really pretty little iris. Very, very pale lavender. Jopai. Which does well in the sort of soil I find. And Speaking of this soil, we'll have a look at it. <laughs> yep, red clay. Lovely stuff. I've been using some soil that I bought in a big bag to amend this when I plant. More on that anon. <laughs> Of course, more peony, more salvia farinacea. These are snapdragons that I sowed inside in January, and they are just now beginning to, in June, decide to bloom. But they look like they're going to do well. Hey, buddy. Another salvia. Garnitica, which the hummingbirds love almost as much as I do. That's very pretty. Salvia Farinacea. Peony. I have packed a lot of stuff in this little patch. This is a, a Salvia um, Amistad. Again from Select Seeds. Which, I mean, a month ago it was a an eight inch plant and now look at it it should go on getting enormous and wonderful I have some tomatoes in pots um, that's a sun gold and that is a mats wild I did try to plant some in the ground along the fence and they within tried to plant some tomatoes along the fence using the soil that I bought. It's delivered in a large cube container and they immediately curled and I wasn't certain why. I've never had tomatoes curl in that way before so I took them up I wasn't certain 
if there was already some herbicide or something in the soil. So the next thing that I did is that I planted these tomatoes in the, the soil that I bought. And immediately, I would say within four days, they began to look like this. All four. I did some detective work. Why do tomatoes curl? Well, there's something called curly top that can be spread by insect. But I was, sus I was suspicious that these, uh, all of these were afflicted. And then we will go and look down in the other garden and see that those tomatoes have not been afflicted at all. And those were planted in a different batch of soil purchased from the same company last year. So, I have become highly suspicious that this is an herbicide problem in this soil that I purchased. So the next thing I decided to do was go buy some good quality potting soil and try again. Here these are, the Matt's Wild and Sun Gold. And so far, it's been almost two weeks and they have not succumbed in any way. So, uh, unfortunately, that leads me yet again to the idea that the soil that I bought was contaminated in some way. It is certified organic. So, I guess I need to call the company and find out what I need to do about it or if they've had any other um, reports of this. So this, to get back to the flowers, is an echinacea. I think it's a magus. Uh, this was salvia. This is salvia and how to I it has struggled a, a little as has the one I've planted over there you can see next to the poppy the red flower I think they may be sensitive to whatever is in these in the soil now last November or so I just threw some of these poppy seeds out and this is the result. I love them. <laughs> One of my favorite flowers, and I've heard people say they don't like these. I can't imagine why. The bees love them. There seem to be honeybees all over them. And, um, one bloomed on Memorial Day. The first one bloomed on Memorial Day, which I thought was a special thing. So over this way I have a coneflower, I have, um, yeah, I have a perovskia, um, atroplicifolia I think is its species. Um, the fairy, which I put in all my gardens. Little, I guess it's a polyantha, probably. And here is a Jacob Klein Monarda, which I think is interesting because um, I think it was this variety came from the Blue Ridge Parkway somewhere. And it does well. I tried to grow it in Maine with absolutely no success. This is a heavy red clay soil and that was a very well draining, very rich loam up there and I think maybe it drained too well. There also is a mint that I'm going to grapple with. I did not know that was there and it looks so innocent this spring. And now look at it. So, uh, I would never put a mint in the ground, but 
there it is, and I will have to deal with it. It's another rose. I can't remember what that one is called. That is a proven winner of some variety. And then I have all this Napita. I do not know the variety. That was here. And I moved it from farther um, along where that maple tree is, which is way too close to the house. Um, I don't know why people move plant things so close to the house, but they do. But I moved all this Napita along the path, um, and I really like it. It softens it. The path uh, was here. Look at that pretty flower. And that one. <laughs> there were lamb's ears here. Um, and the path goes nowhere. We put this fence in and I haven't decided what to do with this path and I'm not sure I care that much about it. <laughs> I think this is a gara that was here. Um, uh, I haven't seen it bloom so we will find out. This is a little salvia microphylla. I think it's called Cool Blue. Isn't that a pretty thing? Now there's something for the hummers. This will be in full sun in just a little bit. That is a black and blue salvia garnetica. So I tried to put a few things in, in this little side. Um, more more uh, snapdragons than I planted. I don't think there's quite enough sun here to, for this to do all that well. Look at all the mulch. Mm -hmm. uh, I did put salvia uh, benariensis here and I poked in a sunflower seed or two we'll see if they do anything because as I say it's um, a bit shady it does have some sun in the afternoon um, more snapdragons that do look like they want to bloom after all despite the shadiness and I think this one was orchid I also seeded in a little container all this chive that I have along the edge here. I just pulled it into little clumps and planted it and it's doing really well. This was here. I have no idea in the world what this thing is. Not even a little. Here's its flower as such as it was. It is. Um, still don't know what it is. It it did seem to be deciduous. Uh, a few things in here. I pulled out all the viola and put in um, a um, dahlia. No idea what kind it is. As usual, in a lot cheap things. What do you think, dogs? Um, in this pot, I have a coleus salvia benariensis, which, I'm uh, not salvia, verbena benariensis, which is everywhere. I have more to plant. La -la. This is a moonflower. I love moonflower. Um, it's already bloomed because I start started this early, I think in February inside. Because it tends to take a really long time to make it bloom and I did not want to wait until September. So basically, well, that is the size of it. I have sweet peas I planted in here at least two months ago. They haven't done anything much, but now it looks as if we may get some blooms at last. 
I also have a few things in pots because I'm not certain about hardiness here. Um, this is, I believe, supposed to be 7A. It got very cold um, in January. And then we had, we had snow on the ground for several weeks in January. And then we had um, uh, a bad freeze. I think it went down to about 12 degrees Fahrenheit in March and it really, really fried a lot of things. This, and because the soil is so heavy, I don't know um, how that will affect the hardiness here as well. This lavender uh, is sensational and it's in a pot. And this one is phenomenal. Uh, these were phenomenal was hardy for me in May, um, as were a number of English lavenders. So I just don't know um, if it will be here and what to do about it. So it's in a pot. <laughs> I found two more um, phenomenal at the grocery store of all places. And I have um, rosemary. That is supposed to be an extremely hardy rosemary. Uh, will it be? I don't know. This is one I had last year, ARP. And um, kept inside all winter. And by the time I bought it out, it was horrible looking. And I cut it back, and it seems to be trying to come out. Um, but basically, that is this little garden. Give you a shot back towards the house of our flowers one more time because it's pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. There we go.